This is Reset. I'm Sasha Ann Simons. Think about the benefits that come with a nine to five job, retirement, health insurance, paid time off and more. But for the starving musical artists, well, those options don't always exist. But Chicago artists are working to change this through an initiative called Golden Egg. It's a pilot program creating retirement support for musicians. So joining us now with more is Deidre Huckabee, musician and project manager for Golden Egg. Welcome to Reset, Deidre. Uh, thank you. I'm so thrilled to be here. Great to see you. Also here in studio with us is Adrian Ruiz, who's a freelance musician and member of the steering committee, which has guided this grant project. Welcome, Adrian. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. So I want to hear from both of you on this. First of all, tell us about yourself and the kind of music that you do. Deidre, I'll start with you. Oh, sure. My background is in classical music. I, I went to conservatory and studied the flute. Uh, but when I moved to Chicago 12 years ago, I just encountered the breadth and diversity of art that's happening in town. I just, uh, it totally upset my sense of myself. I was watching improv comedy, storefront theater, improvised music, just you, you name it. You can yeah. see it at any night of the week in Chicago. So now I make a little bit different kinds of music. I make electronic music and performance art and still play the flute from time to time, write uh, do all kinds of things. Yeah, I grew up playing the clarinet, and I was always jealous of you flute kids. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I want to be able to do that. Mm. Adrian, what about you? Tell us more about yourself and the type of music that you make. Sure, sure, sure. Um, pianist residing in the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, I do as many genres as I possibly can. Nice. As a freelance pianist, uh, I try to say yes to everything. Um, but I find you find me playing jazz to R and B to oh, corporate, wow. you know, that's incredible. projects and artists when they come into town and things like that. Yeah, you know, theater shows. That is that, that is you're pretty talented. <laughs> so uh, then I'm curious, you know, without something like this pilot program that we're going to get into, is it currently possible for a person to retire comfortably after working solely as a musician, Deidre? Um, it depends. Professional life and music can look a hundred different ways. I mean, Beyonce is going to retire comfortably. Right. Um, <laughs> and there but are, there's only one. Exactly. Yes. You can't compare. Um, but, you know, uh, plenty of professional artists have work on the side. Plenty of professional artists barely make rent, you know. And if anyone is out there working solely in music and earn, earning enough to pay their bills and to save a little bit for retirement... That person is not only very lucky, they're very, very hardworking, they're very industrious, they're very, um, they're very in tune with, with the demand for their work as well. So um, yeah. it's, it's very rare. What do you think about that, Adrian? Yeah, well, Can you retire comfortably? <laughs> it is possible. It is possible. It's funny. And until I want to say this, I was approached with this project, I was like, oh, yeah, retirement. That is something that is going to come up. <laughs> Hadn't even thought about Hadn't it lately. Hadn't even thought about that. It, yeah. You know, as artists, you know, you you love what you do, and you don't imagine yourself ever like the as I guess commonplace, right? You just yeah. Oh yeah, I'm after forty years. I'm not walking up a ladder anymore, or right going I mean, to the corporate office anymore. So for the person like who that. isn't, to your point, like you're thinking about that. I mean, what are some of the ways that they would have to? scrape things together to be able to retire, Deidre? <laughs> I mean, my my personal vision of retirement before I started working uh, with on Golden Egg was was that I might depart the earth before I had to deal with dementia. You know, these, these are the types of ideas that at the time felt easier wow. than imagining my needs, my normal human needs being met as I aged, you know, and now I'm nearly 40. So, so t to be clear, that is no longer my dream. <laughs> I can, I can imagine lots of ways of savoring life. Yes. Um, even, even when it becomes difficult at that yeah. age. And that is good to hear. Yeah. I hear that you're, you're seeing musicians continue to perform into their seventies mm. and their eighties and their nineties. Is it more for fun and fulfillment or in part so that artists can continue supporting themselves? You know, every, everyone's life looks different. Um, like Adrian was saying, music music is a lifelong companion for any musician. And, you know, I hope that I have the chance to, to 
be with music as my life and my body changes. Um, so, so it's not like a traditional field where you're like, I, you know, I can't wait to get to the beach <laughs> <laughs> at the end of my life. It's not like that. Yeah. Um, but some of my favorite music, you know, some of the best records or the best performances I've ever seen have come from artists who have lived a, a long, beautiful, you know, complex life and are sharing, sh you know, sharing that with the world mm -hmm. into their 80s and 90s. You know, I think of Pharaoh Sanders, who played right up until his, uh, he turned 80 right before he, he passed. And his last record, uh, if you know it, you know it, that Floating Points Records with Pharaoh Sanders. I listened to it a hundred times when it came out in the pandemic. Um, or my favorite French composer, Eliane Radigue, mm -hmm. is 95 years old and is still making um, incredible, completely, utterly new, unbelievable work that wow. you know, is unlike, unlike anything else you can hear. I mean, how many times have we heard that, you know, someone has wanted to to follow a passion and, and pursue music, but they had to leave it and find something else that could offer financial stability or maybe they did it, but they also had to work multiple gigs. Is that something that sounds familiar to you? Oh, yeah, Adrian. Absolutely. Yeah. I these days it, you, you can't just perform. So I myself teach, record, perform. Uh, company and all of these things bring in some income. Everything, yes, exactly. And everything adds up and everything works in conjunction, but there's no sole one thing that I could do that would be, oh, this is all I need to do right. today. Yeah. I'm financially stable just from this one yeah. gig. Yep, yeah. And, Not, I think, and that's true for, I think, a lot of professions in general. You know, there's never, I don't know, one profession where it's like, oh, this is all I do. You know, that's it's it. True. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're in the creative space. I, I think we just can't think of like, you just work that one job. That's it. That's you know, it, yeah. but there are people that do that and, and more power to them. Yeah. So thinking of everything that we've been discussing, Deidre, I mean, how does this pilot program work to counteract all of this? Sure. Um, well, Golden Egg is uh, a new initiative we've started that is an artist run retirement matching grant program. This year, we're giving away retirement grants to artists, and um, we only have a small seed seed fund thanks to support from the Chicago Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, those folks who do receive grants, they'll take those dollars, they'll deposit them in an IRA or some other personal retirement account along with a matching contribution of their own. And hopefully in time, those dollars will, will you know, help be a part of their plans as they age. And we'll dig into more specifics later, but Adrian, I wonder how you hope that Golden Egg will, you know, spur conversations in the music world about retirement. So have folks now actually start thinking about it and it not be more of an afterthought like you described earlier. Yeah, I mean, I, I've now made it a point to like all, every student, every, you know, artist I cross path with, it's like, hey, have you thought about this? Because now I'm thinking about it and it's like, oh, and it's always the same reaction. It's always, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, right. Yeah, I guess that yes, is a that thing. Is right. That's not <laughs> yeah. automatic. And right. I, yeah. I, I bet we just tired. did that verbatim too. Right. <laughs> yeah. I know. And even myself, it, you know, I never thought about it because it's. I've always like, oh, I have enough energy, and then as time goes on, it's like, well. I kind of don't have as much energy as I did 20, you know. Might not be able ago. to do this until I'm 90. Yeah. 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 How long ago did yeah. you come up with this idea, Deidre, for, for the uh, pilot program? Sure. Yeah, I first um, imagined this in 2019. I mean, and it was thanks to a big grant opportunity that the Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events had issued at the time. I My work for money work is in fundraising. So um, I just had to imagine some some form of a grant that you know an artist might receive and it stays with them they have a chance to hang on to it and let it appreciate and have a chance to you know grow some of the wealth they need to yeah. age but you you tried a number of times to get this to come to fruition is that right yeah back in 2019 we submitted a couple of grants for this project and you know it's a it's a pretty unusual idea and it's not uh, you know anyone in this line of work will tell you that you don't win every proposal you submit so um no, we didn't get the first couple, but we kept trying. Yeah. And um, last year, the city got some great dollars through some kind of federal pandemic relief program, uh, which created this new grant opportunity that we went for and got. And you partnered with the Experimental Sound Studio? What's yes. that collab about? 
Yeah, ESS, our experimental sound studio, is a Northside um, experimental music uh, nonprofit. They are a performing venue. They have a, an amazing archive of experimental music recordings. Uh, they do all kinds of multi-artist events and commissioning projects. They've they've they're amazing. First of all, I lo- I was a huge fan of their work and often going to shows there. Yeah. Um, but they have a mission that's that's very arts service focused. They're always trying to the folks that work there are always trying to imagine new ways of helping artists as a community. Um, and so it was just a natural fit to approach them with the idea. I knew that they were trying to figure out health care for artists, which is a whole other nut to crack <laughs> one day. Um, so yeah, I approached them and it was just a very, very natural fit right away. And a nonprofit partner has been really helpful because it means that we can accept donations that are tax deductible, right. for example. Um, and we have a little bit of kind of community clout and support through that partnership. Adrian, why did you get involved with the project when you were approached? It, you know, as I, I, may, I always say, you know, I didn't, wasn't thinking about it, but it was always on the back of my mind. And then when I always think about, oh, how can I do something? What can be done? And it's like, you can't, it's such a big question. And so when I got the email and I looked it up and I said, oh, this is fantastic. This is what is needed. You know, it's exciting. This is like the youth get involved, you know, start thinking about this stuff that, you know, they don't talk about in schools. Mm-hmm. They don't, uh, they don't know, quite prepare you for. Yeah. They yeah. Don't, you know, all that stuff. And so at, at, I envision it growing and I would, and I hope that it begins the conversation for a lot of, uh, younger individuals in the arts that's like, oh yeah, I should start this mm-hmm. now. <laughs> I should start this now. Yeah, when I look at the members of of the steering committee, Deidre, I mean, there's a range of musical genres, including DJs. Do different kinds of musicians have different considerations that need to be accounted for when we talk about retirement? Sure. I mean, I I every person has different considerations to negotiate if you you know talk to a financial planner and they'll add ever you know all these asterisks to any advice they give you because everyone's uh, needs are totally different and everyone's careers are totally different um but all of the musicians that are part of our steering committee and all of the musicians that have applied so far definitely need financial support for retirement. Um, right now we've gotten 126 applications for our retirement matching grants, nice. which is awesome. And 50 per, fully 50% of those applicants have zero retirement savings right now. Wow. <laughs> so we're all pretty- so there's a need. Exactly. Yeah, we all universally just need to start thinking about it, need to start preparing for it. Yeah. And you say people have to do a matching grant here, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, of any amount? Yeah, any amount. The idea there is that uh, people start just getting in the habit of setting aside some dollars along with the dollars that we give them. I also imagine, you know, um, kind of, I, th- I think there may be some hidden capital inside our own community as, as much as we like to think of ourselves as starving artists. Yeah. I think there are some dollars in there that we could just direct around a little bit differently if we, if someone prompted us to make different choices. So, mm-hmm. so that's the idea behind the matching grant uh, yeah. facet of it. And Adrian, how did the steering committee decide what qualifies someone as a working musician? Ooh, that's actually a really good question. Because <laughs> I think that was bounced back back and forth, you know. Like, how do you, you know, tell So what someone, was yeah, the, tell me, not, bring me into that conversation. You know, how, do you, <laughs> how do you, like, is it someone that just does it one day a week? Or is it someone that, like, is every day on the grind? Yeah. Um, so we came up with, we you know, several meetings we came up with a nice application and um you know using tax you know your you know tax uh prior taxes and everything like that you know to kind of say all right yes yeah you are you are an artist yeah you are you are an artist (laughs) my memory of those conversations is that they got a little bit heated sometimes Um, oh i bet they did i'm trying to get the tea here totally it's you know there was a moment where we were like does someone does someone need to earn 80 to a hundred percent of their income as a musician to be considered a professional musician, for example. Yeah. Um, and some people felt pretty strongly about this on the steering committee. Um, but in mm. the end, we decided that any musician that calls themselves a professional musician, uh, 
is a musician. Yeah. And at, in terms of the application, in order to sort of prove your active professional musician status, status, you just need to submit a couple of links that show evidence of you having performed. So yeah. things like, um, you know, an Instagram post about your gig last month, that that kind of lets us know that you're And we musician. live in the age where people do that anyway, e exactly, right? Yeah. Um, so you're only able to fund 16 people this round. You, as you mentioned before, you're hoping to sustain and grow the program. Quickly, uh, what's success going to look like? How do you measure that? Honestly, this year, giving away 16 grants is a huge success. That will be something that no one has ever done. Um, yeah. And those dollars going into folks' retirement accounts, especially folks who have no retirement accounts, that that's a huge achievement. In my lifetime, though, I you know I fantasize about raising a hundred million or five hundred million dollars for this idea, and really, ga you know, gathering as a community the kind of wealth that we need to sustain one another, like true democratic ownership and yeah. control of a community trust or fund that protects a lot of people that are going completely unprotected at the moment. Like this, this that's the fantasy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> when is the deadline to apply, and where can people get more information to? Either apply or support the initiative. Oh, yeah. Our website is goldeneggchicago.org. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Golden Egg Chicago. And the application deadline for musicians, and again, that's anyone who identifies as a professional working musician, that deadline is November 1st. That's Deidre Huckabee, who's project manager, and Adrian Ruiz, a freelance musician and member of Golden Egg Steering Committee. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sasha. It's a dream. Aww.